Hey boys, it's Arm Nan. Today we're going to be going over 10 cars that you should not buy in Grand Theft Auto Online in 2023. Some of these vehicles have little to no customization, some of them have poor performance, some of them have a combination of both, and all of them are far too expensive for what you are getting. So let's go ahead and jump into this, starting off with number 10. At number 10, we have the Overflood Xeno coming in at $2.8 million. And overall, it's not actually a terrible car, but for $2.8 million, there are far better ones that you can get. The Overflood Xeno is somewhere outside of the top 30 fastest supercars in Grand Theft Auto Online, yet it has a top 10 price tag. In all fairness, I actually do like the Xeno. I think that it is actually a pretty cool car. It looks cool. It's got some good customization. However, performance wise, it's not the greatest. And also, if you put any aftermarket mirrors on the car, good luck driving it. That's pretty much it for number 10 with the Overflood Xeno. Let's move on to number 9. At number 9, we have the Overflood Tyrant coming in at $2.5 million. This car has a few problems, uh, but we're going to start off by talking about just how absolutely massive this car actually is. It's like they were using a player model that's 25% bigger when they designed this car because this car is like 25% bigger than any other supercar in Grand Theft Auto Online. This thing is crazy big. If you look at it compared to my character, it's like, it's insane. I don't know what Rockstar was thinking. On top of this, this car is also plagued with engine resistance and poor customization as well as obviously generally bad performance largely due to the engine resistance. The engine resistance basically makes the acceleration super slow and the top speed very weak. However, the handling on this car I must say is actually pretty good. However, I am leery of this because it's definitely easier for a car to handle well at lower speeds and the overflood tyrant doesn't get to higher speeds so obviously the handling is going to be a little bit better. Overall, the overflood tyrant is just simply not worth it. Next up at number 8, we have the Zirconium Journey 2 coming in at $800,000 without the trade price and at just under $600,000 with the trade price. The Zirconium Journey 2 doesn't need to exist. This car should not have been added into Grand Theft Auto Online and something else should have been in its place, but it kind of goes along with the theme of the Los Santos Drug Wars DLC as kind of one of the worst DLCs ever. And this is one of the worst vehicles that we've ever had added into the game. It does have a little bit of customization, you can change the color and you can put a livery on it, but other than that, it's basically just a regular journey, except with nicer paint. It's very slow, handles very poorly, accelerates very slowly, brakes terribly, and it's not that cool and you can't really bring it to anywhere that you would maybe want to bring a camper. So it's really not worth picking up and for 800 or 600 grand, it's just a complete ripoff. This is one that you should absolutely avoid. Next up and number seven, we have the Obey Eye Wagon coming in at $1.7 million. Generally, just another pretty terrible electric vehicle. All the electric vehicles in GTA seem to handle very similarly to each other and seem to have generally the same performance. Yes, it has great acceleration. It has a terrible top speed though, and the handling on it is not that great either. All of the electric cars in GTA kind of handle similarly, which isn't to say it's a good thing. They all handle kind of poorly. And this is just another one. It does have a little bit of customization, but it's pretty boring stuff. And overall, I think that the shape of this car, along with the performance, just makes this thing an uninteresting car that I would have rather had something else put into the game over this. The Obey Eye Wagon is not that good. I would avoid picking it up. With that being said, let's move on to number six. And at number six, we have the Volcar Warner HKR from the Tuners DLC coming in at $1.3 million without the trade price and about 900 to a million dollars with the trade price unlocked. The Volcar Warner HKR is fucking terrible. It is a terrible vehicle. Fully upgraded, maxed out everything. This thing can barely climb a hill. It is so unbelievably slow. It does have very good customization, I must say, but driving this thing around is just uninspiring and not fun at all, largely due to how slow it is. But the handling isn't even that good either, and the top speed, of course, is pretty weak. Overall, the Volcar Warner HKR is definitely a car that I would recommend skipping in GTA Online. Let's move on to number Number five. At number five, we have the Overflawed Entity XXR coming in at $2.3 million. This is another Overflawed vehicle that suffers from engine resistance, which makes it much slower and generally just worse than it otherwise should be. And sadly, with the XXR, there's not a lot that you can do to it either. Customization on this thing is pretty limited, which is very sad. However, 
The Overflood Entity XR is the model for a newer Overflood Entity that's been added into the game, which is of course the Entity MT. The Entity MT is also $2.3 million, however, it has generally better performance than the XXR, more customization, and is more fun to drive, despite that it is modeled directly after the XXR, which has engine resistance and a bunch of advanced handling flags. So I can't see why you would buy the Overflood Entity XXR knowing that the Entity MT exists. They are modeled after different Koenigsegg vehicles, but I would say that the Overflood Entity MT is the much better vehicle for the exact same price pretty much. So the XXR is just simply not worth it. Let's move on to number 4. And at number 4 we have the Brigade 6x6 coming in at $1,450,000. Now do not get me wrong, I'm not saying you should not buy the Brigade 6x6 or get the Acid Lab. That is not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is you should not buy the Brigade 6x6 if on Warstock it says the price of this thing is $1,450,000. If you purchase the Brigade for this amount of money, you will not be able to even use it or get the Acid Lab within it. It is not a way to skip doing the initial 6 DAX missions so that you can unlock the Acid Lab and the Brigade 6x6, which by the way, once you've done those missions, it will only cost you 750 k to get this thing. And purchasing it for the full amount, you don't even get access to using it or using the Acid Lab within it. So I'm not really sure why Rockstar even gives you the option to buy the Brigade 6x6 before you've completed the 6 DAX missions because you can't even use it. So if your price on your Brigade 6x6 says $1,450,000, do not buy it. Just do the 6 DAX missions, you're pretty much going to get 750 k and then you can buy it and then go and get the equipment upgrade for it by completing the 10 DAX Fooligan missions. Just an absolute ripoff by Rockstar. They're basically charging you $700,000 for absolutely nothing if you buy it for that $1.4 million price tag. Don't get tricked into it. Don't buy it for that much money. Let's move on to number three. Next up at number three, we have the Pegasi Tesseract coming in at $2.8 million. The Pegasi Tesseract is yet another electric vehicle on this list. And like all of the other electric vehicles that I've mentioned so far, the handling is pretty bad. And that is by far the Tesseract's worst feature next to the price tag. $2.8 million, you can almost get two Insurgent Pickup Customs. You could get an Insurgent Pickup Custom and a Night Shark for the cost of this thing. And both of those vehicles are far more useful. On top of this, the Tesseract also has little to no customization. And for $2.8 million, it's just an unjustifiable car to own. Unless you're absolutely balling out of control. Yes, I know the Pegasi Tesseract is a Lamborghini Fortnite concept car and it's very cool and very attractive to maybe younger players of Grand Theft Auto, but the fact is, is that the Tesseract is an absolutely awful vehicle. With that being said, let's move on to number two. Next up, we have the Grotti X80 Proto coming in at $2.7 million, so 100 grand less than the Tesseract. However, this thing is arguably quite a lot worse. The X80 has little to no customization, it has a front bumper option and a spoiler option and maybe a couple of other things here and there, but it has very little customization and it's not really that much fun of a car to drive. It is all wheel drive so it does have decent acceleration as well as an okay top speed, however the handling is a different story. The X80 Proto is kind of good when it comes to handling, but only if you're going a certain direction. What if I told you that with the X80 Proto, if you were heading towards Polito Bay from Los Santos, and you were turning right, significantly more downforce than if you were coming from Polito Bay, heading down to Los Santos and turning left. Yes, the Grotti X80 Proto's downforce value depends on which way you are facing on the map. For example, if you're playing a race on the east coast of the map, your downforce is going to be worse than on the west coast of the map. This car is absolutely fundamentally broken and should not be trusted whatsoever, and nobody should be buying a Grotti X80 Proto in 2023. Leave this thing back in 2016 and never talk about it again, never touch it again, and certainly do not buy one. And finally, moving on to the number one car you should not buy in Grand Theft Auto Online in 2023. It is, of course, the Coil Cyclone 2. Coming in at $2,250,000 plus plus an additional $475,000 for the HSW upgrade. Now the Coil Cyclone 2 by itself is not actually a terrible vehicle, it's actually pretty good. Fully upgraded without HSW, this car is actually pretty fantastic. However, if you put the HSW upgrade on this car, it becomes nearly undrivable. Like all the other electric cars we've gone over, the handling goes absolutely terrible on this thing with the HSW upgrade. 
It has fantastic acceleration and actually a pretty good top speed as well, thanks to the HSW, but the handling is unforgivable. It feels like this car is front wheel drive with the amount of power that's going to the front wheels. It torque steers and it feels like a front wheel drive supercar, which is not something that you really want. And for the money, there are just simply better cars. Now it does have a little bit of customization, but nothing to write home about. And for this amount of money, you'd be much better to just save it and purchase yourself a weaponized Ignis and get the HSW upgrade on that. You'll find it far more useful and it's faster as well. So anyway, guys, there you have it. That is it for the top 10 cars you should not buy in Grand Theft Auto Online in 2023. Let me know what you thought of my list in the comments down below. Let me know if you hate the fact that I put the Tesseract or the X80 Proto on this list or any other car for that matter. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, dislike if you love the Tesseract, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new, and I will see you all in the next video. Until then, take care. Peace.